Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Weller and today I'm doing a review of the Monster Manual for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. This is my favourite book for the Dungeons and Dragons 5e game. Primarily because it's full of monsters and I love monsters. It's published by Wizards of the Coast. It was put out quite a while ago. I was part of the Alpha Play test when we were testing these monsters. And I have to say, this book is awesome. I'm going to say right now that don't expect the challenge rating on monsters to be accurate because it simply isn't. Challenge rating is more of an art than a particular calculation or formula that you can use. You can buy this from your game store, the book depository or Amazon. This book is absolutely jam packed with monsters. It has great art, really important and useful information and also all the stat blocks you would require. This is actually my second monster manual. I had a first monster manual. It's still sitting in pieces. I've actually lent it to my brother. This is actually not a first printing. The first printing of the monster manual is not that great. They tend to fall apart. Mine did. So I suggest you try to get one that is the second printing or the third printing or something like that. So as you can see, great artwork already. All watercolour. We get a little bit of information on who actually created this. In fact, you should be able to find my name in here somewhere. And then the contents page, which lists all the monsters. Now, it doesn't look like a lot of monsters, but trust me, there's heaps and heaps of monsters in here. Now, it breaks it down. It tells you how to use the book, where you can find these monsters, where they dwell, what sort of monsters they are. It gives you information on how to read the stat block, how to determine its size, its type. It gives you information on alignment, armor class, hit points how it moves, whether it flies, swims, burrows, climbs, all that sort of stuff. It gives you information on its ability scores and its modifiers, its vulnerabilities, resistances, immunities and how they work, the different types of sights and visions that they might have, language they might use, and their challenge rating. There's often a section for monsters on special traits. Monsters with special traits is what we want, right? And how their actions, whether they be ranged, melee weapons, uh, melee attacks of some kind, whether they use ammo, how to use reactions, how to run and use legendary creatures. One of the problems with this book, though, is that you don't have a chart that pulls all of the monsters that would be located in a particular area. Although it does give you a basic idea in the description for each monster where it might reside, there's usually a section on its environment. It doesn't give you a chart to break it down, make it a bit easier for you. That's actually located in the Dungeon Master's Guide. I don't understand why. This is one of the features of this book that I didn't like. I think that needed to be at the back somewhere. But this book apparently ran quite long and they couldn't do that. So we get the Arakokra. There's usually a really good description for each monster followed by the stat block in yellow in a box. And we've got angels. I'm going to flip through this fairly quickly. I find I use most of these monsters. I haven't used every single monster in here, but they are fantastic. I would say that they are a little bit tame when you get at higher level, but still really fun. Beholders. Who wouldn't want to have a beholder in their game? I love beholders. They're great. Uh, bugbears. You're going to need bugbears at some point. Bollywogs. The bullet. Carrion crawlers. And as you can see, the artwork, it's all watercolour, it's really well laid out, it's really uh, clean, and it, it doesn't sort of bleed in, it sort of doesn't get lost amongst the text. I've always liked pretty much all of the monster books that they put out for Dungeons and Dragons, but this one is definitely my favourite in terms of its cleanness, the images, its layout. It does seem a little bit like it's... Um, it got space that could have been used, but I feel like it's actually just about perfect. And we've got lots and lots of nasty beasties in here. I haven't used all of the uh, the demons, and I've used a few of the devils. Not all of them. So some very wicked things with claws and barbs. And it gives you a, a write-up. This is one of the bits that I liked the most, was the write-up. The descriptions here of how these creatures might operate and work within your game. The Displacer Beast. It's an awesome looking cat. And it gives you enough information to really build a, a decent encounter. Not just run a combat encounter, but build something interesting into it. Uh, we're getting into dragons now. Now the dragon section includes the dragon stat block and a little bit about the dragon, but it also gives you information about the different layers. 
Every dragon has a different type of lair, which is awesome. They have lair actions, regional effects, things that they can uh, actually use. So the dragon, if it's a really old dragon and been in that location for a long time, they can use lair actions and make things happen uh, when it's not their turn. Uh, usually at initiative 20. I did a video on that topic not so long ago. Now why am I doing a review on the monster manual now? when I should have done it like a long time ago? Well, because I feel like this is the time to do it rather than when it first came out. Now, it doesn't make sense. The key book for a dungeon master is the monster manual. It's not actually the dungeon master's guide. You need this book over everything else. Um, apart from, say, something like the player's handbook, although you can get away with not having that if you simply download the free PDF. Uh, elementals are covered. There's not a lot of elementals. They are sort of scattered throughout the book. A few different options for elves, most of which are dark elves or drow. Fairy dragons, the Etten. Really, really exciting artwork. I, I love this book. It's probably the one thing I flip through the most. I spend more time looking at this book, reading it, than any of my books at all. If I had another Monster Manual pop out, a Monster Manual 2, then I would be reading and and then soaking up everything from that I possibly could. It covers giants, all the different types of giants, fire giants, cloud giants, frost giants, stone giants. So if you're a dungeon master, I, I really do advise you to get this book. In terms of the printing issues on this book, there really haven't been uh, spelling errors. There were a few errors in the early book, but most of those errors were picked up pretty quickly. You won't see this kind of errors you would have seen in the early book, the very first printing. The later editions actually have the errata built and they've picked up on that, made sure they got all the errors and they've integrated them into the, the new printings. So as you can see, lots and lots of really cool monsters, hags, the harpy, half dragons, which is kind of like a dragonborn, but a little bit different. I think they're probably a bit more powerful. The helmed horror, the hippogriff, we've got hobgoblins, hooked horrors, all of the uh, traditional monsters, the hydra, I've used the hydra many times before, the intellect devourer, yes, let me devour your brain, the kenku, Kraken. I've used the Kraken a bunch of times, at least three or four times in my games. The Lich. Now I've used a Lich a couple of times too. This is like a spell casting necromancer and it's actually a legendary creature which means you get lair actions and you get legendary actions to spend and it's a spell caster. So really really cool stuff. As I said all of the key monsters are in here. All the things you really would be looking for. Were creatures are included. Obviously the werewolf. The manticore. Now we're just about halfway through this book and we're still going. That's how big this book is. Mimics. I love mimics. You always got to have fun with a mimic. Mind flayers, the minotaur, the modrons. I'm using modrons right now. Funny little characters these modrons. Mechanical creatures bound to one hive mind. Mummies including a mummy lord. The Naga, Bone Naga, Nightmares, if you want to use a Nightmare in your Curse of Strahd adventure. The Ogre, very familiar. Half Ogres. One of the nastier monsters out there, the Oozes, the Black Pudding, Grey Ooze, Gelatinous Cube. Very, very fun. Orcs, they've given you quite a lot of information on Orcs, including quite a few stat blocks to include as well. The Albear. Like I said, all the traditional monsters you would expect are in here. And it does give you really good information. Now, when you start looking at the pixie and think, nah, the pixie's like tame. Trust me, the pixie is an awesome encounter. You can have a lot of fun uh, turning somebody into something because they can cast polymorph. If you read down here, polymorph combined with giant apes or T-Rexes, uh, a pixie can cause a lot of strife for the players. The Purple Worm, used that a couple of times. The Revenant, Ropers, the Rock, all your traditional mythical creatures are included in here. Including a few you haven't seen before. Skeletons. Does anybody want a Tadpole, Spectre, the Sphinx? Sprites, I'm going to keep flicking through. And yes, the Tarrasque is in here. 
huge stat block, great picture, and a little bit of information, and this thing pretty much is immune to all damage. There isn't very much you can do to this thing. The Trent Trolls, the Umber Hulk, Vampires, Unicorns, lots of information has been designated. Now I'm still flipping through, paying attention, still it's a huge book. The Wraith, Raven, Yetis, if you want to use Yetis, and then we get into things like the Yanti, and a few different types of creatures, a little bit more out of the mainstream, if you want to use them. There's a couple of different zombies you can use, the standard zombie, the ogre zombie, or the beholder zombie, which just sounds frightening. The appendix at the back has miscellaneous creatures. This includes just beasts and creatures that you might include in your game that you want to use that aren't necessarily a mythical creature or a Dungeons and Dragons monster, such as the brown bear, the boar, the deer, dire wolf, giant centipedes, giant frogs, there's a whole section on giant creatures, full stop, giant wasp, killer whale, lion, panther, polar bear, if you want a polar bear in your game you can have a polar bear, swarms of different creatures, bats and insects, vultures, the wolf, obviously you need a wolf, the warg, Appendix B gives you non-player characters. These are just standard characters you might need in your game, such as an assassin, a bandit, an archmage, an acolyte, a cultist, a commoner, very, very important to have a commoner, berserkers, a mage, guards, druids, scouts, priests, nobles, and then we get the index at the back, which of course is very important. I don't quite understand why we had to have images here, pictures in the actual index. There are more pictures. If we had put all of that on one page, we might have been able to squeeze in another chart or page for a breakdown of where these creatures are supposed to reside. It would have been pushing it, it probably would have needed another page, but th this is a great book, except for the exclusion of breaking the creatures down into their different locations, which is in the Dungeon Master's Guide instead. So what do I think of this book? Look, this is my favourite book. I was part of its creation. I love it. And I, I really highly recommend getting this book over the Dungeon Master's Guide. Uh, if you're a Dungeon Master, get this book first, then get the Dungeon Master's Guide. This is the one you really want. If you found this video helpful or informative, please share, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit the bell button underneath the video if you want occasional notifications. I do videos every day, so you probably don't need to be notified. If you have any questions about the Monster Manual, just put them in the comments and I'll answer those questions. Until next time, keep rolling those 20s.